Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we're going to do a little disassembly and maintenance on this little guy right here. This is the uh, Gerber Knives Fastball. So, let's go ahead and take this guy apart. I am very slightly afraid at the moment. The reason for my fear is um, exactly this. We can see already a little bit of sign of maybe screw stripping or something like that. I am very prepared to call this if it's not working out. But, uh, actually, okay, that came pretty straightforwardly. That's good. Let's go ahead and pop this guy out. Okay, good. So they're not using a terribly aggressive thread locker or the body screws. That makes things a lot easier. Now the only thing that remains is the pivot here. This is not an assisted knife, although it certainly can feel that way. Um, and so luckily, I don't have to worry about that. Okay, they appear to be using some kind of a thread locker right here. But a little tiny bit of torque here and we are uh, popped through. That's good. Okay, no problem. Very nice. You know, I was very afraid there, but the, oh boy, a little hint of the red devil in there. Permanent thread locker, but luckily not so much of it that uh, I was able to pop this guy loose. Um, Now let's go ahead and take this guy the rest of the way apart. Very curious about the inside of this. There we go. Lift that off. <clears throat> Oh, the Red Devil is freaking everywhere in this. By the Red Devil, by the way, I mean Red Threadlocker, uh, Permanent Threadlock. Never something I generally recommend. Never something I generally recommend. Always something I never recommend, perhaps is another way to put it. Um, just because it tends to make disassembly and maintenance a little trickier, although in this case it looks like it was applied sort of in the general direction of the pivot rather than to the pivot directly. Um, and so there we go. Um, I'm wondering whether we're going to be able to, you know, improve things a little bit in here. Very often that can be the case, but it's not universal. What I'm going to go ahead and use, and by the way, if you're curious about any of the tools I'm using in my disassembly process, go ahead and check nickshabazz.com slash tools. That'll show you, uh, it's a video talking about my tools exactly. Let me go ahead and use this little plastic spudger here. And I'm just using this to kind of pop this off over the pivot here, as well as over the stop pin. Let's go ahead and there we go. Beautiful. And we are disassembled. So the grease being used up in here is not beautiful. Um, you know, it's 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 not super problematic, but I bet we're gonna have a better action when we're done with this. You know, I was actually very afraid of those stripped screws, but uh, that turned out to be kind of a non-issue, and I, I'm very happy about that, honestly. So Gerber, 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 to give you some backstory here, I'm, I've been doing this thing lately with disassemblies where I, I, I'm, in addition to taking the knife apart, giving a little bit of backstory for the review, and I think it's a useful thing. But anyways, um, what actually ended up happening is that at the Blade Show, I attended the awards banquet, I got a set of tickets, it was a free dinner, and hey, why not, right? Um... I, uh, and thank you very much to the person who gave me the tickets. But anyways, I digress. Um, you know, we're sitting down table, and, uh, then some folks from Gerber Gear, uh, walk up and say, hey, you know, we're from, we're from Gerber, do you mind if we sit down with you guys? That was entertaining. Um, but nevertheless, and so we ended up having the, this dinner with them, and, you know, it was an entertaining dinner. I appreciated that very much, and, uh, the, one of the people sitting there was actually the designer of this knife, a guy named Seth Jeremus, I want to say his last name, and maybe Jaro Sorry, Seth, if you're watching. Anyways, um, uh, he was a nice guy. He had the prototype right there in his pocket, and it was, it is an impressive knife design. Whether the execution is there, that's sort of a different question entirely, um, and that's going to be the major uh, question for the review. Um, but nevertheless, it was a nice, impressive design, and so he and I, is, that is, Seth and I, ended up keeping in touch after Blade Show, because like I said, I was impressed with the design, and uh, he seemed like a very nice guy. And uh, it's always interesting to have, you know, connections within the industry just because I can get questions answered, right? He actually just uh, came on Gear Geeks Live uh, with Tony Scullambrini and I. It's a podcast. Uh, hopefully that will have aired by the time this has, but uh, we, will, we, we, we will see. But regardless, um, you know, it was, a, uh, it was a nice discussion there. And then... You know, once Gerber realized that I was actually, in theory, and this is my reconstruction of their uh, thought process rather than any strong assertion, but once they realized that I actually don't have anything against Gerber, 
Um, they've made some stuff I don't care for. They've made some stuff, you know, I'm okay with. The, the, what is it, the Ablet Day? I'm sorry, EAB Light, whatever. Um, you know, I think they realize, you know, holy crap, somebody in the EDC world actually knows about us. Um, that's, that's, that's a joke because Gerber once was a, an amazing company for EDC. But anyways, um, and then they decided they wanted to reach out and further. And actually, it, it, the way it turns out is I'm going to go take a tour of their factory in, uh, in July here. Um, and they, they want to, no expectation of anything, you know, they don't even need me to make a video about it, but they just kind of want to show off their U.S. factory a little bit. And you know what, I, at some level, my first and foremost priority is as a gear reviewer, and so I'm not letting that affect the quality of my reviews here, but nevertheless, um, you know, I, that's a possibility for me to learn, right? And that's an important thing for me to be doing. If I'm going to be talking about this stuff, I need to be knowing about this stuff. I'm just removing the red thread locker from this guy. They really splashed it in there pretty good. Um, and the more I can get out of this out of there, the, the easier things are going to be, both during reassembly and potentially the better the action is going to end up being. <clears throat> Not that the action is particularly bad. We can see here we've got a steel detent ball here, which goes nicely into a steel detent ball hole on this guy, and uh, the action on this guy is quite good. Borderline, I'll say it, borderline, the, the detent on this is a little hard, and that's not generally a problem that you have from a company's first unassisted flipper. I mean, at that level, that absolutely deserves respect. It's very seldom that a company gets that right first out of the gate. Heck, some companies are still uh, struggling with that many years in. <coughs> Spydeco, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I had a little cough right there. Um, anyway, so, well, at least from their Daichang plant. Golden's got it. Um, have they done them? No, I guess not. Anyways, whatever. But that's kind of the, the, the relationship there for full disclosure purposes. Um, and so I, I'm very curious to take this guy, I was very curious to take this guy apart because very often one of the things that can reveal a knife to be well made, poorly made, or indifferently made is the disassembly process. Is it, you know, worth a damn or not? Um, have they taken the time to put it together well, or is it, you know, a series of half measures? And so far, what I'm seeing here is, you know, it's not a $900 custom with all kinds of crazy internal milling on the aluminum and things like that, but at the same time, it is certainly an interesting piece. One thing I will highlight, though, so check this out. Um, this has a very interesting internal innovation, if you will, something that's a little bit different relative to the rest of the world. Um, and that is right here. This is the pivot. And what we can see here is that the pivot actually is the bearing race because you, you see here, there's a liner, there's, a li uh, there's an aluminum scale, there's an aluminum scale, and then there's just one liner on this guy. The problem with aluminum as a liner material uh, for a knife on bearings is that you don't necessarily, my understanding is, you don't necessarily want the bearings rolling on the aluminum because, well, the bearings will be hotter than the aluminum, it'll compress the aluminum, eventually you'll end up with things like blade play, etc. It's not a great thing. And so you have to find a way around that unfortunately. And the, uh, the, the the way that they appear to have chosen is to run the bearings on one side against the pivot itself, against this other side of the pivot. And so this actually just sits inside here. Like it's captive in that there's this little rim here around it, but basically this sits here and serves not only as the thing that's holding the knife together at the front, but it also serves as the bearing race. And because it's actually retracted a little bit, they can keep this knife a little bit thinner. Um, this, I don't know whose idea this is. Maybe Seth mentioned that on the podcast. I forget because he talked about this, but seeing it in practice, it's like, okay, that's neat. That's a cool idea. And honestly, um, Again, I respect that. There are some things that I, I definitely don't necessarily care for at, the, at this kind of a price point. This is a $100 knife for what it's worth, and I, I don't want to spoil my review too much, but there are definitely some areas where some other companies are doing a little bit better. But at the same time, the fact that they came out of the gate here with their first American-made unassisted flipper, um, and they not only nailed the detent, but they also tried some different things, that's actually a positive sign for me. Because it means that they're thinking about it. The thing that bothers me more than a company that is, you know, basically if you aim high and miss a little bit, that counts a lot more for me than people who just do something that is lazy throughout. Where there's just no damn reason whatsoever to do any of this. Where it's just like, okay, 
you just took another person's knife and you made it yourself. And I, I don't mean that, you know, directly, but, you know, there are so many uncreative knives where they're made exactly like every other one was made and they're just doing it at a different factory or something like that. This has some innovations. They're subtle. I think they're maybe more process level, but I can respect them. And particularly the one-liner situation here, although it might bother some with a love of symmetry, um, the fact that they did it using this approach, I'm sorry, using the, the, the pivot as liner, uh, as bearing race approach. That's kind of neat. So, um, I, you know, I respect very much the fact that they're uh, not just doing, they're, they're not just basically making the knife, they're trying to make it interesting. They're trying to do their own thing with it. Um, this fastball is not right down the middle. So, you know, there you go. That's, uh, that's what's going on here. Uh, let's go ahead and put this little guy back together. Okay, uh, how am I doing this? I guess, I suppose I'm going to be rebuilding this from the bar, from the show side up, which is fine. Let's go ahead and, is this fully clean? Can I get that last little bit of gunction down in there? Yeah, okay, beautiful. The real question becomes, how is this going to run afterwards? Might be better, might be the same, might be worse, who knows? We will see. Centering on this guy was pretty much right on. I should have really shown that off ahead of time. Wasn't like quite uh, dead on perfect, but it was plenty good enough. Um, the first one I got, oh, you, 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 it had a major, it was a train wreck. But um, anyways, so you know, I'll talk about that in the full review. Uh, let's go ahead and use, for this guy, I'll use some 10 weight nano oil right here. This is a uh, nice lubrication for uh, bearings. Pretty long lasting, etc. Um, but anyways, could also use knife pivot lube, Daiwa real oil, whatever. Probably overdid that, but okay. Drop that onto there. I'll go ahead and spin the bearing here just to fully coat the blade. Uh, rather, the, the, the bearings, that is. Okay, next step here is to drop this blade onto the pivot. Did I just forget something? No, I didn't. Okay. I'll go ahead and drop a, a little bit more oil into there. That will serve not only to lubricate the pivot, but also everything else. And I will also put a little bit of oil right onto the detent ball path right here. Um, there is no detent ball ramp here, although the way it's designed, it's sort of kind of coming onto it obliquely, so that's probably why I don't care as much. Um, I'll go ahead and just for completion, put a little bit on the ball here, as well as onto the track here. Okay. Knife is now duly over lubricated. One thing to note is that this has a D-shaped pivot. Look right here, there's a little D-shape, and that means I need to have this rotated in the proper orientation, um, and that orientation is with the pivot facing, or with the D-shape facing backwards. So I'll just use these tweezers right here and rotate, rotate, rotate. There we go. Hopefully, yeah. Okay, good. So now I just need to pop everything back into position. Um, first off, there are locator pins that are on the back spacer that need to seat themselves. The stop pin needs to seat itself. Oh, damn. I am rotating my stop pin away from home. Uh, not stop pin. Uh, pivot away from home. Okay, so that's there. Uh, these popping into position. No, but that's probably because I have the blade deployed. And unfortunately, when you have the blade out, it's very easy for things to be out of alignment because the blade is going to be pushing against things, etc. Why is this not wanting to go home? Oh, because there is no... For some reason, I thought that there were locator pins on both sides of the back spaces. So, of course, it's not going to snap in because there's nothing to snap in. Anyways, don't mind me. Not a brilliant man. Next step, then, is going to be, actually, to go... Oh, damn it. Wait, did I do this backwards? No, I didn't. This is the only way I could have done it. But at a certain point, I'm going to need to flip the knife over. Yeah, okay. At a certain point, I'll need to flip the knife over and screw in from the other side. Unless... No, I think I will. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and do the pivot, then, because that's our next step. Got me a pivot screw. Uh, for this pivot screw, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of the blue Loctite. 
And there we go. Let's go ahead, get everything reseated there. And, oh, come on. My goal here is not to fully crank down the pivot or anything like that. It is simply to get everything in position such that as I do the rest of the other side, I have no additional wiggle. Okay, that's way too loose. Something's not quite right here. What am I doing wrong? No, it's just way too loose. I think that's my issue here. All right, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is put in the other screws, and then I'll deal with the pivot situation. My worry is that I might have actually come loose from the free-spinning pivot area, but we will see. Um, go ahead and insert this here. Okay, now we can see this is going to screw straight through to the other side. Did the aluminum on the... Uh, is it screwed in the liners as well? Yeah. Either way, it's screwing straight through to the other side there. No problem. Well, I don't know. I'm always slightly concerned about not using a barrel uh, spacer or something like that. But yeah. Okay. Now, finally, this is off. Oh, no. Okay, that's it. Let's go ahead and tighten this down. Something's off here. Maybe I'm just needing to tighten more. Whoa. Okay, nothing is off here at all. No, that's right on. It is dead freaking center. Uh, I mean, if it is anything off center, I can't really tell, so that's close enough. The action is better. Smoother, if anything, on the detent. It could use a lock bar uh, detent ball ramp. That's for damn sure. But uh, is there blade play? There is zero blade play. Okay, we're good to go. That was easy. Actually, that was surprisingly easy. Okay. Color me impressed. I uh, <laughs> I was very afraid, honestly, that, the, you know, afraid in the sense of just like, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I was afraid that we were going to have a major issue in the uh, disassembly process. But uh, no, that actually turned out to be relatively straightforward. And it turned out to be reasonably well done. I'm very happy about that. Good, good job, guys. Um, but anyways, there we go. Let's go ahead and carry this guy and uh, get ready for the full review, which you will be seeing in a couple of hours. So enjoy. Have a good one. Bye now.